in the beginning, John wanted to be the executive producer and find another uh, a writer and a director to make the film. But after a couple of years, we started talking about the film in December 2009. Right. And I think it was around February 2012 when uh, John said, and pardon my English, he said, fuck it, I cannot wait. So, and yeah, he's a TV host, he can say these things. <laughs> and he said that, so let's uh, do it ourselves because it was a timely story. It had to be done immediately. It was not like snakes on a plane that you can always find snakes on a plane or friends with benefits that you can always have friends with benefits. So it had to be done immediately. And then he said, let's work on the script together. And I think the directing came organically through that experience because he had invested so many, so much time and so much energy and so much passion in the project that he did not want to give it to someone else. So, um, then in 2013, we filmed it in Amman, Jordan, and I mean, when I went to prison, it was I, I thought that I was coming out and I was going to write a newspaper magazine piece called 10 Days in and in Prison. But of course, 10 days became 20 days and uh, almost four months. And I decided to uh, share the uh, reality that I saw in every prison with others and I decided to write a magazine article, talk about it, write a book, and then you know, all of this is part of the same process. And since I've come out, I've started uh, different projects and different campaigns. One of the campaigns that we have now is a project called Journalism is Not a Crime, and the website is journalismisnotacrime.me or .com, account holders. And in Iran, in, after, in the aftermath of the 2009 uh, protest, dozens of people were arrested. Iran was the biggest jail of journalists in the world in 2009. It's usually in the top three or four after Eritrea, China, and Turkey, but that year it was number one. And I remember when uh, sometimes I was in solitary confinement most of the time, but when they took me to the trial and to I was going out, sometimes they were I saw I could see many young people who were in Edinburgh prison. And of course, when I came out, I realized that uh, hundreds of people were arrested because they were sharing the news on the internet, and th these people were faceless people. I was really lucky that. I was working for the international media. I was lucky that I had the attention of the international media. People knew my name uh, outside of Iran. But many people were not that lucky. So one of the uh, things that we're trying to do in journalism is not a crime, is to give a face and name to these unknown journalists who are actually in a much more vulnerable situation than me. I was a VIP uh, prisoner and I was treated like that. Imagine if I was not a VIP prison, what would happen to me? The film is, let's say, the watered down version of what happened, but because we did not want to repulse audiences, we did not want to make the film into a torture porn like many other films, uh, we decided not to go that route. Actually, John was, when we were working on the script, he wanted to have much harsher scenes, and I was the one who had to, you know, had to argue against it sometimes. So, uh, because I think the film is very different from the book, because the book you can just close it and go have a cup of coffee, go for a walk, and then come back to it. But with the film, it's so intense that in some films, when you see so much torture, so much beatings, it's just that you go numb and you don't understand it. So, I think maybe in a sense, uh, yes, it did uh, justice to it in a way that it uh, sustained the psychological torture and made it sustainable, but at the same time, it was much more intense in reality. And even in the book, of course, I could not convey the uh, real, the reality of what was going on.